Nathan, good yes. to see you. Same, good to see you. I hope my internet connection is stable enough for you. It it's probably right. isn't, but it doesn't matter anyway. Who gives a shit? Exactly. I mean, like, you know, if, if there isn't interruptions from, like, doorbells, cats, dogs. Oh, exactly. It's basically not worth doing. Exactly. Exactly right. So, so new boosting. The last few years, the old boostick has been my favorite shoe for sort of, and I guess it is a performance, you know, shoe for what I think have been mostly trad and sport. They're the business, they're dead supportive. So for our sort of nation of a lot of vertical rock, they're fantastic on small edges, but they are pretty beefy. Now, what we've got and what I think you're just about to strip apart is the new boostick. And I'm excited about these, but I'm also intimidated because when you like a shoe as much as I like the old boostick, uh, when anyone changes something, Nathan, I become worried. And I know a minute ago you called me a dinosaur and told me I've got to move on. You're so, a dinosaur. Grow <laughs> so, up. Things get better. So, Grow up. So, so tell me some good stuff about this. All right. So the first question always, like you said, is boostick's like a really cult shoe. So for me too, I love it. It's really, really hard to find something that's stiff and supportive and super precise like the boostick. And I think what I would really say is don't confuse supportive and sensitivity. They can be both. You can make something really, really thin, really, really supportive and still get sensitivity. Most climbing shoes, they get the support through making things thicker. So the first cool thing about the original Boostick is the midsole wasn't thick. It was curved. That's how it actually got it there. So you've probably seen the midsole before. It's like a piece of, of flex sand, basically. So it looks like a little piece like that, except that in the Boostick, it's curved up the side. You, if you look really carefully, you can see the outprint of it on the shoe. And it's just on the side of the toe here, this bit here. Where's my little pointer pen? I've got pen? one in my hand right now, and you really can feel it in there. Yeah, yeah. and if you look carefully, if you open your eyeballs, most people don't open their eyeballs when they're looking at climbing shoes. They look at it and go, oh, it's Otto, and that's a beautiful colour. I'm like, look fucking closer, God damn it! It's the details. Here is where the midsole curves up outside edge of the foot, just before the tension system. Same midsole as the old one, exactly the same. Curved, one millimeter flex sand, does the whole forefoot at the front here, and it curves up the outer. That means that when you flex it, it's stiffer. Harder to smear, but more support on the foot to load smaller footholds. The bad thing was in distance. This has a lot of distance. So the new one, the first thing we did is thinner is better. Doesn't matter what you say. It's like sports class. Faster is better. You know, it doesn't matter what you say. Like everything like that. And with climbing shoes, thinner is better. You do sacrifice durability, but it depends. Do you need durability in that area? So you see a lot of boost sticks coming through to get resold and the upper is still perfect. Fourth, fifth resold. So as a designer, the first thing you think about, too much material. That's what I think. Fuck, this guy's got his fifth resole and his upper's still perfect. It's too thick. That's the first thing I think about. So what we did is straight away this second strap system that you see on the front here, this has a PVC reinforcement on it on the other side. And then on that side, we used here, suede leather on the old version. This one, it's ceramic microfiber. So it's still abrasion resistant, but it's thinner, 1.6 millimeter. That's that means, then, yeah. yeah, yeah, you don't want a lot of bulk on the top of the foot. It's still abrasion resistant. It's still really strong because the strength doesn't come from the thickness of the fabric. It comes from the type of fabric. And this is reinforced. So you don't need to make it thick. You can make it thinner and then you put the reinforcement on it and it fits the foot. The stick is not a double Velcro closure. I know you're looking at it, Rob, and it says two Velcro. It's not a double Velcro closure. I'm not the expert here, but they're, they're, I must admit what I'm seeing does look sort of too Velcro-y, but tell me, tell me otherwise. Because you're not opening your eyes, Rob. It's a whole flap. 
The whole upper is joined into a flap down the bottom. And this whole thing closes together with two Velcro straps, but it's not a double Velcro like a Vapor V. It's a whole flap. Compression is really important in this type of shoe. You have to squash the foot. If you don't take this in a size where your foot is compressed, it doesn't work. You can't oversize a boostic. In the new boostic, I take half a size smaller than the old one because it's Alcantara now and microfiber. And with half a size smaller, I get the same compression as the old one. It comes to it faster because the material is more adaptive and I get the same precision, but I don't have to wait 10 pitches to break in my boostic like I used to. It's almost straight out of the box. But if you get it in the same size as the old boostic, you won't get the same compression. Now, boostic users are very sensitive people. They're precise climbers. That's why you buy a boostic. So getting the right size is really, really important and changing the materials changes that. So I suggest that if you are a boostic lover, you go half a size down in boostic to get the right compression. In the toe here, you can see the patch of Alcantara. Remember what we said at the, at the beginning? Thinner is better. 1.1 millimeter instead of two millimeters. This Alcatara material as well, uh, Nathan, I know you were talking about just before we started, is the same sort of stuff they're using on the interiors of like SpaceX. Uh, yes, yeah, SpaceX capsule. If you ever go to Mars, your ass is going to be in Alcantara. <laughs> but, you know, lots of things that use Alcantara. Uh, you know, Louis Vuitton handbags are made of Alcantara. Uh, McLaren F1Cs are Alcantara. You know, it's, uh, it's really, it's used because it has the texture of leather. So you get good grip, either that on the steering wheel or your butt in the seat. And it keeps the texture for longer. It's stronger and lighter. So you can make it in one millimeter, have the same texture as the leather, but instead of having two millimeter leather, you can have one millimeter Alcantara. Closer is better, Rob. Doesn't matter how you look at it. The closer your big toe is to the surface of the rock, the better the shoe will be. So you've already saved one millimeter there. One millimeter is significant in climbing shoes. It's significant. Think about the difference between five millimeter rubber and four millimeter rubber in a climbing shoe. Massive. The new one has 3.5 millimeter rubber, not four. It's more precise. Do we lose some durability? Yes, you do. You lose some durability, but not much because you're talking about durability at the tip here. If you go to the resale lab here at the factory and you get the resale for Boostic, mate, 99.9% .9 of the shoe is perfect. It's only the tip of the toe that gets worn out. And when you make that 3.5 to 4 millimetre, it doesn't make a whole lot of durability. It doesn't. It, you're tearing the rubber off the tip of the toe. That's what you're doing. I guess, Nathan, one of the things you're allaying my fears of here is when I heard you decreased the, uh, you know, thickness of the rubber on the sole unit there, I was thinking, mm -hmm. oh, no, this might have a knock-on effect that may have made them too soft, you know, and, and sort of drawn the, what, the major thing that was good about them away from it. However, what you're saying is that is not the case because of a load of other cool construction bits that you've been doing, that thickness of rubber being removed is actually not detrimental increased precision it's increased, it's increased precision that's what it has and it's interesting yeah. you should say as well about you know that uh, just because a shoe is supportive doesn't mean that it doesn't have to be sensitive because i've seen a lot of cases that's not always true because a lot of brands will just as you say make the rubber thicker or the midsole stiffer or what have you and yeah so it ends up with actually a lot of supportive shoes not being so sensitive but the principle of the new Boostic is that actually you can get both of those. Um, Absolutely. Side Absolutely. Side. Yeah. And you can, you can increase the fit of the shoe or decrease the breaking in time is probably what I would say. So the instant fit is a lot better with the new one because it's all microfiber with Alcantara at the toe. And then you've reduced the, the upper like the compression straps of the upper, the whole upper thing is less bulk. That's increased. So you have to go down half a size, but in the end, you get something that's more price in, than it was in the last one. And, it, and you don't have the same break-in period, basically. A lot of people didn't want to put the time into a boostic 
It just takes, the old boost, it took time. It took time to get used to a stiff shoe. It took time for the leather and everything. All of this was leather in the old boostic, leather, leather, leather. There was only a small patch here of microfiber and the rest was leather. So now that's, now that's all Lorica, Alcantara, and then uh, uh, 1.6 millimeter ceramic microfiber on the outside. And all of those materials are thinner, except for the microfiber. The microfiber is still two millimeter dual ply microfiber. So it's just in the whole shoe now. The basically. other good news, Nathan, is that no longer will I get a uh, Harlequin covered colored feet from where the diet in the uh, Correct. leech onto your foot. Uh, that is something that wears in quicker as well is appealing because as you say for, yeah. for for the beast it was within its previous life it definitely yeah required it took some breaking in yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the tension system now is is a different tension system it's this dts tension system so it's like a morph between a fear air and booster tension system and the old tension system so you have this pulled tighter than it did in the old one, basically. That gives it more stiffness to counteract that softer upper and to counteract less of those layers. And that's how we're balancing that out to still keep that stiffness and precision in the shoe. So the tension systems on the side here, people always look at these little wings on the side here and they're like, oh yeah, that kind of wraps up the foot and stuff and you get all these different stories. It's all about the flex point. These wings are all about controlling the flex point and Heinz would have made 40 prototypes just repositioning these different wings. And it's all about cradling the foot, but more importantly, where does it flex when you bend down like this? That's what those little wings are controlling. Making this one piece, instead of having the tension system, the V tension, and then the slingshot rand at the back, means you've got one piece of material instead of two overlapping each other. One piece doing the same job. It morphs better. Every time you have a seam, you have glue, these bits of material that double over are never as good as one piece that can go around the whole shoe. The toe cap construction is more or less exactly the same. We left that. We tried to change it. We did all these different incarnations. In the end, we found this. And this is a very important toe piece. This is one piece here at the front, like an instinct lace, not like an instinct VS. And then you've got this toe patch inserted just on this side, on the other side here. So I mean, it's like a combination. There's more than enough rubber there for the sort of the modern toe hooks. Oh, yeah. Any form of purchase, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, yeah. The heel at the back wraps right up and over. So the full length sole goes from the tip all the way through and up and over the heel. It's got this arch support now that the old one didn't have in the middle. Once again, using a piece of material to further support the shoes to counteract for that loss of material in the middle. It doesn't matter which way you look at it, the closer your big toe is to the surface of the shoe, the better you are. It doesn't matter how you look at it. Nothing to do with the stiffness or anything, but the closer you are to here and the closer you are to the inside, the better it is. If that could be one millimeter, we would love it but durability is unacceptable. So you end up in this 3.5 millimeter balance where it's durable enough for, we're happy with the durability, but it's still giving better sensitivity to a really, really precise top end climbing shoe. So, you know, the last is slightly different. So I know that scares the shit out of you, Rob, because you're a dinosaur. Am, you're like, keep the last the same. What are you I doing? I am we know in a state of fear that, uh, uh, that you'll change them, but I, I, I'm slowly being won around by everything you're saying. Have faith in someone that's been doing cl climbing shoes for 40 years, Rob. 40 years. He's Heinz got it right. and what he's doing. He's got it a right few times before as well, hasn't he? It's not his first climbing shoe, Rob. Let's it's just say his... that. You know? <laughs> it's not his first climbing shoe. He knows what he's doing. The confusion comes with FZC. So same as the booster, same last as the booster. And it's wider at the forefoot here, but it's lower volume. Now that really fucks with your head, doesn't it, Rob? I said it's wider and it's lower volume. It doesn't panic me too much, that one, thankfully. It's because people don't understand that climbing shoes are not single dimensional. 
It's not about how wide it is here, it's about how high it is here as well. So we've opened the foot up a little bit across here, two millimeters on the sample size, but we've squashed down the volume at the top. So even if you've got a lower volume foot, the overall volume is the same. The overall volume is the same, but we've reduced the bulging on the inside here that used to happen. That's what we've reduced. So it's wider and lower volume. Lower volume in the heel as well. Lower volume in the heel volume on the side here. I think something that people try to conflate sometimes is that wide means high volume and low volume yep. means narrow, which isn't the case. Hey Nathan, no. just, to, just to wrap up, where would you view these as being used? Because I mean, I say I've used them trad climbing, sport climbing, you know, more so on that British environment where we have a lot of, you know, places like Pembroke or North Wales, Snowdonia, Gogarth, and then, you know, on the sort of Malums and the Kilnseys of this world, uh, where would you yep. view these as being used the most or what environment? One of my really pet hates is people go, this is a bouldering shoe. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, this is a trad climbing shoe. You're like, that just doesn't make sense. I know plenty of people there in the UK that have done really hard trad in chimeras. Like, what's wrong with that? It depends on the size and nature of the foot, not what you are doing, but what the shoe is being used on. That's the difference. So this shoe, this boost stick, this is the DTS tension system. So you see less holes, like the perforated holes a bit more, bigger holes again in the Furia air, so less holes, wings on the side, coming in the other side. So that's a slight modification as well. So this shoe is for operating on the tip of your toe. That's it. If that's bouldering and you wanna make dominate a really small hold, if you're doing a trad route and you wanna dominate a small hold, if you're doing a sport climb and you wanna dominate a small hold, that this is what this shoe is for. You are sacrificing flexibility, not sensitivity in order for your weak foot to feel stronger on a small hold. That's it. They suggest it could be for anyone. I use it and I test it at most on the face climbing around Arco because more or less trad climbing is not really that accessible for where I am, but I always think about the foothold when I'm testing a shoe and there's plenty of really gnarly face climbing right close to my house, up to 8C plus, less than vertical. And this shoe dominates that. In slippery rock, it's a bit uneasy if it's really polished because you simply can't get the surface area that you can on something like a booster, basically. But on the crux holds, this shoe is definitely better. The higher up the route, the more fatigued your foot is and the more the boost it assists you. So I would class it as an excellent shoe for someone that wants to dominate small footholds and is prepared to sacrifice some flexibility but still wants something that is sensitive. That's where I would say it is. And for that, this asymmetrical shape where it focuses all the power on the big toe, the midsole that's curved up and over, that's more supportive on the whole of the front foot, the tension system, which has a lot of tension in it, and the Alcantara at the toe all contribute to this shoe being one of the best shoes to dominate small footholds with. I would also add that nobody's thinking about this style of shoe. How many high performance stiff shoes have you seen come onto the market in the last years, Rob? Uh, very few indeed, yeah. Exactly, because they don't care about it. They're just caring about gym climbers, soft shoes, running around on volumes, climbing ultra steep territory. We really want shoes for all different types of climbing. In the last three years, we haven't touched soft shoes. We've only done stiff shoes in the last three years in all R&D. So we really believe it doesn't matter what you do with a soft shoe, there's always a place for stiff climbing shoes. And we've constantly developed that. Hard stiff shoes are out of date, out of trend, and they've either left them and continued with what they've had 30 years ago. Perhaps a really old Heinz Mariaka design is really, really good. Or they've just decided that it should just be a beginner shoe that should be really stiff. And we've changed that completely on their head. We've made beginner shoes like the Veloce, 
which I wouldn't actually call as a beginner shoe, but I would say is suitable for beginners. It could be for any type of climber, but Veloce is suitable for beginners and it's super soft. So we've turned that on its head. And now with high performance shoes, we've gone, no, no, there's still work to be done in making shoes super supportive and super precise. And we've got more super supportive, super precise shoes. But I won't tell you any more than that because that'd be a secret. Hey, well, Nathan, shift so, your camera up just so we can say goodbye to your face. All right. See you later. Hey, <laughs> take us through that. Um, there is more than enough information for the uh, Boostic fans out there. And for those who don't know anything about it or haven't tried them on before, they will know more than they could have ever imagined by the time that they've watched this video. Take half a size smaller. You'll love it straight out of the box. Cheers. Thanks, Nathan. See ya.